I'm joined by David Connors of the Chewham Hurl to talk about the Galway Hurlers heading into the 2021 season. Last time we saw Galway, and you're obviously a mad, passionate Galway Hurling fan, but David, the last time we saw Galway was the All-Ireland semi-final against Limerick. And while Limerick were battering absolutely everybody, Galway had them within arm's length going into extra or going into injury time of the All-Ireland semi-final. And yet at the same time, it felt like there's a lot more to the Galway Hurling team than we're after seeing here because it's quite a patchy performance. So, are Galway not that far away? Probably not, truth be told, Shane. I'd, I'd agree with you there entirely, those sentiments. Um, although, I, to be honest with you, I do think they were lucky to be to be even within an S's roar coming down the home stretch in the first place. Like, so, um, like the Limerick passed up, I think, the three or four good goal chances that they missed. I think their short conversion rate was was fairly down as well. So it probably had a bit more to do with Limerick's performance, really, rather than Galway's. In fairness to Galway, though, you would have to give them credit. They hung in there. You know, things might have been going their way, but they, they, they never let the game get out of sight either, which was which was a positive sign to, to take from it more than anything else. Have you heard of much change in the Galway panel over the last several months? I'd imagine for most managers who haven't had access to players in group settings that they're just what we have, we hold, unless there's like a star young lad coming through. Uh, there was there was probably a bit of changes uh, back in January. Um, I think about eight lads left and eight lads came in. Eight kind of fresh faces or fresher faces that might have been there before. Um, J- Jack Kenning would have been probably the probably the standouts in terms of national media coverage. Um, you know, the, having having that name and nephew with Joe, he was always going to garner the headlines more than anything else. Um, but uh, alongside him, there's probably there's a there's a good batch there of, of players that come through, lads that have really stood up over the last year in the club scene more than anything else. And they mightn't have been ready for inter-county action last year, we'll say. Um, but I know I know a good bunch of them went away. They worked on their strength and conditioning. They, they worked on worked on various other aspects that the manager management told them to do. And they, they've, they've got their just rewards now and they've been drafted in. Other than that, um, panel-wise, James Gehill retirement seems to be seems to be the only one really um kind of that's that's kind of stepped away they're they're probably lucky enough in that sense i i know uh, sean blaine he would have been uh he would have been involved with galway under 20 under 21 there a few years back he's taken a year out to kind of focus on the club game as well but other than that it's it, it's as you are you have your your heavy hitters still involved you've joe kenning obviously the mannions davy burke is back for another year dahi burke johnny cohen aiden hart garage beckinary the, the usual faces are all still there so it's 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 an experienced crop, um, you know, heading in, heading into the national league and and championship as well. And I'm looking at the match program from the All Ireland semi final last year, and some of the players that are standing out to me, Dahi Burke, obviously, he's ha- had another fantastic season, picked up another All Star. Brian Kincannon, I thought, was brilliant, and I I think we agreed that he he was probably an All Star last year, or certainly. You know, right there, Connor Whelan, he had a great season uh, overall. Kyle Mannion up and down, I suppose. Some brilliant performances, some where he was a little bit more quiet. And I think, if I remember correctly, he went off injured against Limerick after about 20 minutes yeah. or so. And that was a big blow too because, you know, he'd been free, uh, scoring freely enough. The, like, what would you like to see in the evolution of this team? If I'm a Galway man, and I, from being from Tipperary, I want to see Galway lose early and often, as you know. I'd, li- I'd like to see Dahi Burke out in the half-back line for the entirety of the year. Brilliant full-back and all as he is, but you kind of have to, sometimes you have to rob Peter to pay Paul. But I think Gerard McInerney can do that job full-back and that you'd get more of the team being driven forward if Dahi was out uh, centre-forward. Parik Mannion playing as the sweeper. I, I don't really think Galway need to play a sweeper. Um, what would you like to see? Um, I, I think you touched on a, a lot of points there I'd agree with. I'd like to see Dahi tested it a bit further out the field anyway. Um, you mentioned Garage McInerney there. Another per- player I'd like to give a crack at full-back would be Fintan Burke. He's, he's club form. I know mm. it's I know it's a, a long way away, um, club and inter-county, but his club form at full-back for St. Thomas is, was probably this, one of the deciding factors of the year for them. Um, they, they leaked a few goals in the, the first round of the championship against Kels Castigar when he was wing-back, and then he went back, and they probably, you know, he, he basically bossed every game. Um, you saw last year what Finton in particular he could do when he came on. He came on in the second half, I think, at half time, and he put kind of he did an excellent job in Garage Hagerty, and um, probably one of the only people to to keep him some way quiet over the over the course of the over the course of the year. More than anything else, he was uh, he just kind of rather than Joseph Cooney was on him beforehand, who uh, maybe tried to hurl Garage Hagerty a small bit. Finton Finton Burke basically hung off him and. Uh, 
you know, midlife as difficult as possible more than anything else. That, well, that's what you want, exactly. And Fenton is a kind of a throwback to one of these old-style defenders. Like, he's physically, he's good under the dropping ball. He's, you know, you're, you're, you're probably not going to beat him too easily. You're not going to go around him. So I, good like, hand. I think that, He's a good I think hand that, and, and, like, he's a stylish hurler. Yeah. He has most things that you'd want. That's it. Like, and even you wouldn't be afraid of peppering, you know, of any full forward in there, peppering, like, high ball coming in on top of him because he'll win his fair share of it and he'll at least stand the man up, if nothing else, anyway. So he'd be he'd be one now. I think Galway have actually a perfect National League schedule. Um, if Westmeath up first to kind of, I'd imagine there's going to be a huge amount of experimentation and and trialing of players there. So that that's that's a nice run to maybe blood a few newer players, maybe a few la- newer lads on the panel or lads that didn't see action last year. Um, then you have you have a, a section of Munster teams in which probably Shane O'Neill said in the he had a press conference last week and he said he's that's kind of it's actually a great schedule in the sense that the Munster teams when they play each other. They, there's a small bit of shadow boxing, but when they they kind of take on Galway, and they know they won't be meeting them in Munster. And um, there's, there's a chance to really go at it, and you know you can kind of you can play your hand there as much as you like. So they're going to be tested for the final four games after that, really, really heavily. So there's going to be a lot of rotation. You touched on the the sweeper there. I um, I think it's just words. You know, you'd be you'd be hearing on the street that I, I think we're going to see a more attacking Galway this year, maybe That's a bit more want. traditional. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just kind of what I'm hearing that maybe Galway will be a bit more attacking this year. Maybe they they will just front up with six backs, six forwards, two midfielders, and even if you you had one of the midfielders just sitting in front. You, it automatically doesn't seem as defensive. Even you know, it's it's not just an out and out seven defender either. So yeah, I'd that'd be something I'd definitely like to see. There's there's plenty of young lads there that that need blood, and like say you've. You, you've Evan Island. You saw the cameo, the cameo appearance against Limerick. You think that'd be a game that wouldn't suit Evan Island, given he's smaller in stature um, and size. But he, he had a huge impact, and he's he's able to score and, t- and take his chances when when he gets them. So um, yeah, just trialing players over the league, Shane. It's silverware doesn't matter a whole pint over the league. It's you know yourself in Tipperary now. It's it's basically Munster or uh, for us provincial Leinster and All Ireland. They're they're the targets from now on and. Having a real cut at them would be would be the goal more than anything else. Yeah, because I look at last year and I wonder about a couple of other things like Joseph Cooney. I know he came back and he was played in the half back line and spent a lot of that game against Kilkenny fullback on TJ Reid and actually played quite well. TJ Reid stood him up for the goal, went around him and scored a nice one. That that's fine, but I don't really blame Joseph Cooney too much on that. But I'd. Like when we talk about having five forwards last year against Limerick and in other teams at times, I'd nearly like Joseph Cooney as one of those forwards because he can get around the field, he can burst through lads. Like if you had a four, like at times that forward line you had when you had five up front last year, it actually lacked the energy and the ball will. And so I just thought the balance was a little bit off. But I, de- I definitely don't think that Galway should be too far. Like they're as close to Limerick as anybody is. That's 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 agreed. Like you're probably looking at themselves and Tip are probably close enough to on a level level par behind maybe but behind them. That'd be my opinion. Oh, anyway. Um, but I think I think there's a there's a trail impact in afterwards. But there's probably it's it's probably the case. Truth be told, that outside of Limerick, everyone else can probably beat each other on on the given day between the top teams. You know, you, you, depending on results. So you'd. You you wouldn't you you'd be you'd be confident if if you could get someone to to maybe take out Limerick you'd be happy enough but I I do think there is there was green shoots in O'Neill's um, first year last last time out I do, I do think there was a lot of positives to take from it um, he, he trialed you know it was it was a new new goalkeeper he had two or three I think championship debuts um, in in the defence and you had Joseph Cooney going back now you, you touched on you'd like to see Joseph Cooney in attack there before the Limerick game he was probably probably arguably Galway's top three players. Um I thought he had uh, I thought he did well on T J Reid outside the goal, um which is which is no mean feat. Um the the Hegarty one was probably I, I, I don't know, Hegarty just had the the beat of him on the day. But I, I I wouldn't have any issue of keeping Joseph Cooney in the hat back. I know what you're saying that you might need a ball winner or maybe that athleticism as a wing forward, but I, I, I personally prefer Joseph Cooney in the half back line because we have a goal we now seem to be I, I, I'm I'm just on Garage back in early. He really hasn't his form hasn't really got to, got back to the levels of twenty seventeen since. It was good in twenty eighteen, but he was injured for in some of the crunch games. He he was injured against Clare in the semi final and he wasn't right in, in the, the final against Limerick and twenty nineteen was basically a write off and last year O'Neill seemed to use him a kinda of wing back and I think he started. He started the tip game. He was in cornerback on 
on uh, Noel McGrath. I think Noel McGrath starts at the top of the top of the left. So like you're not going to get the best of Gerrard McInerney out on the wing. And is 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 does O'Neill see him as a six? And um, I, I don't know to be honest with you. It's he doesn't seem to. He doesn't. He did. He didn't seem to have the belief in him last year at six. So it's probably either fullback or or probably nowhere now at this point. Uh, so that that six position is is problematic there for Galway. So if you did bring Dahi Burke out, that that might solve it. But the the only other solution might be you know you could have Shane Cooney or then you could you could try Joseph Cooney there again. Like so, I personally I'd have no issues with with sticking Joseph Cooney at six. I actually think he's it's probably his best position from having seen him at club and everything. He's it's where he probably he he's, he does his best hurling outside trying to shackle Garrett Hegarty last year. Which you know how many how many players in the co- country do that. There aren't many at it. What, what about the older guard uh, in the team? David Burke, he was taken off at half-time against Limerick last year. Now, he, he's ha- obviously had some brilliant seasons for the Tribe, but last year I don't think he would consider one of them. Probably didn't li- quite look himself. Joe Canning is 32, but, uh, and like 2017, he obviously won Hurler the year. 2018, he was absolutely brilliant. 2019, up until he got injured in the league, I thought he looked like he was in Hurler the year form again. Then last year... Um, I would say at times he, he, he did well, um, scoring three points from play against Kilkenny, if I remember correctly. Obviously got the four sideline cuts against um, Limerick in the All-Ireland semi-final, but didn't seem to be moving as freely as, as I know we can. And obviously people take, you know, clutch their pearls if you say anything because they think therefore, you know, it's massive criticism. But like, wh- where's he going to be at? Where's Conor Cooney going to be at? Some of those uh, more experienced players. Um, just, just, just on Kenning, like it's it, it's understandable the levels might drop off slightly. He's what he's 32, 30. He's 32, he's, yeah. he's you know he's 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 approaching the and he's had some some serious serious injuries over the last few years as well. So, like there's, there's going to be a fall off in performance. You you can't pick up those injuries at that stage of your career and expect to be hurling the same. I I would agree with you. Last year, I I didn't think his performances were what they were in 2018 and 2017. Um, I think over the four games, I think he scored five points in play. Um, which would have been unheard of down down you know over the over the past decade before that um, he'd normally he probably could get that in a game a lot of times but I suppose one example would be that it's it's probably a lot of other lads are taking up the bur- the burden now arguably arguably you know maybe 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 some people might disagree but Conor Whedon is probably always most important forward in uh, in, in the present day and maybe Brian Kincannon is next like I, Brian I, I, I think it would be hard to argue against that. Sorry, yeah, it's. I, I don't think you could. I don't think you could put Kenny currently, well, on the form of last year ahead of Conor Whelan. And just on Kenny, I know you we, you mentioned him there for the All Star. Um, just looking over stats and just chatting to a few fellas, no player in Ireland had a, a higher score involvement last year. That's between scoring himself, uh, assisting, and winning free. So, I th- I think you were you when you done up your not your All Star team there with yourself and My- Michael that you were you I think you were bang on the money and I'd I'd agree with it wholeheartedly. Um, Davy Burke, um. Davy Burke was, I suppose, might have been well known, but he was carrying a foot injury last year. I think he he had it from the county final. I don't know did he ever fully recover from it um, properly. So I think he was kind of nursing that all along. So that might be there. But again, I suppose t- time stands still for no man. He's he's some amount of miles on the clock. Like Davy Burke was has been hurling round round the calendar around the twelve months of the year for I I'd say six seven years now. You know, between with Thomas's runs in the All Ireland Club, he's he's had very little downtime. And um, Galway are usually at the at the, the latter end of the or at the business end of the championship as well. So maybe he might come back refreshed. I know O'Neill tried him as the sweeper against Tip. It didn't really work. It's it's probably I think it's probably it's terrible to say. And it, it, you know you don't want to be calling anyone old, but he's, it's an old dog, new tricks type of type scenario there. That um you know Davies played all his career basically midfield. He played a, a spell at centre back for Galway. When he younger as well, but like he's hurling his done at midfield. Galway are probably a tad light in midfield options. It's probably one of their one of their areas where they don't have a whole pile. It's Johnny Cohen is likely probably to feature again this year, and then you've you've Adrian Tuohy and maybe Cahal Mannion and Davy Burke. So they're, they're your options there, unless you, unless you try Porrick out of unless you probably try and move him out of wing back. Very few um, are natural Connor midfielders. Cooney. I like Davy actually. Now that you list them out. Yeah, it's there's 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 nothing really like him. It's you know it's 
it's it, it, he's kind of one of a kind really and like he's a real big game player as well you even like even he can still have an impact like because like there's, there's no point right now because came on against Kilkenny and when the game was kind of going away for them he nabbed two points and I think that put Galway back in front again um in last year's uh, Leinster final so he still has a, a, a punch in him like so and I, I know he probably would have came back this year. He's there's probably there's very few more determined people in Ireland. So he would have came back. He, he was taken off at half time against Tip. He was taken off at half time against Limerick. Like that would have that would have stung like anyone. Never mind a fella you know that's probably regarded as one of Galway's greatest ever players. I think he's what he's he's four All Stars. He's he was man of the match in the 2017 All Ireland final. He was Galway's best player in the 2018 final against Limerick as well. Um, you know he's. Him in particular, you'd be you'd be hoping that there's probably maybe an Indian somewhere in him. You don't want to you don't want to say he's old or anything, but there's still you just get that feeling like he, he if if he could get it, you know if he could get a a clean run at it, he might still have a bit to offer. Yeah, I think so, and like that that performance definitely would have stung him. Like both the game against Tipperary and Limerick, and I think Limerick in the first half, he had a few balls caught over him as well, which I thought was very unlikely, but he. You're right about the miles on the clock, but he still is only 31. And I remember 2018, you know, everyone was more or less writing off, Tif- writing off Tipperary in the older guard. And then they won an All-Ireland the following year with much of those players that had been on the road for 10 years. So it, I think Davy Burke definitely, there, there's a chance that he has a, another kick in him. What about some of the younger players? And I'm just looking at the bench from last year's game against Limerick. Darren Morrissey, he was a minor captain, if I remember correctly. Sean Loftus has probably been used... He was used corner back last year in the game against Kilkenny. I thought that was an unusual one. He's been used in different positions. Sweeper, even uh, like kind of a standout performance against Clare, I think, in 2018. Um, uh, Jared Mannion is a, is a pacey young attacker. And then you have the likes of Jason Flynn, Niall Burke, players who came on to such effect in 2017. And I'm, I'm sure they've had plenty of criticism in the meantime, too. So what do you see of, of some of the more emerging players now? Uh, obviously, those two aren't emerging. But who do you see as being able to step up? Um, there, you were definitely, you mentioned Darren Morrissey there. He's probably, cornerback wise, he's probably one of the best in Galway. He's, he's probably a natural cornerback, if, the, if, the, if that's, if that's the right term mean. of saying, you know, he's... It, 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 he, it's his position. It's it's where he probably functions best. Um, there is there is a couple of spots there maybe that are up for up for contention. So he'd be definitely one that you would see. Um, you you're, you probably would be likely to see plenty of league action. I know he was carrying a bit of an injury last year and the kind of go with. It, it was very hard to break in after if you missed a couple of weeks last year around championship time. It was very hard to to get your bearings and get back in, especially from a young player. Um, Sean Loftus as well, yeah, he was trying to call her back. He, he, in fairness to him, he probably had a bit of a nightmare against Owen Cody for Kikini. Um, didn't didn't really work out, but then he was a huge surprise selection against Limerick. Um, Fenton Burke dropped to the bench. Um, everyone expected Fenton to start. Um, he was Sean Loftus was picked to corner back, and he, his whole task was to 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 check out Graham Mulcahy, and I thought he did a fine job. Um, go with tired towards the end against Limerick. They, they probably basically offered everything, and when Mulcahy went off. I think it was Peter Casey that came on, and you know that's the last thing you want to see when your 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 legs are starting to go as a cornerback, especially you know in an All Ireland semi final against against a team like Limerick. So like the the last few minutes really kind of caught up with him there, but he probably he has a bit to offer. Um, I, I maybe maybe my God, we mightn't be going with a sweeper this year. Um, that that probably will mean that he'll have to probably fight for a place a wing back. He's a, he's also an option at midfield. Um, he's a great stick man. Like he's he's used to position is is first class. It all it always has been always coming up through the ranks. Um, he's usually played sweeper, but you 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 wouldn't have a whole a whole issue with him trying him in midfield. I, I know he had, he played a bit of game time there in the twenty eighteen semi final against Clare as well. Um, so yeah, um, who else did you, did you say? Does T J Brennan back there in defence as well? He's a uh, captain of the Galway under twenties this year. He's um, to find her or big strong bring strong fella um trying to think of a few other fellas now that it would be did Jarlett Mannion or around. Did he step up oh sorry Jarlett Mannion Jarlett Mannion is on the squad but Jarlett Jared, Jared <clears throat> Mannion is electric based there's no one faster in Galway the problem is he's usually when he's trying to break in it's usually around the, the soft side of you know winter winter hurling in the league and it doesn't really suit him he's better when the ball is is bouncing up into his hand and he can he can take on his man and particularly with the new sin bin rule someone like that with pace could be could be advantageous i'd like to see someone like him now actually get a, a decent run maybe 
two or three games in the league, even if the, the first game, second game, maybe didn't go go his way, maybe kind of stick with him and kind of persist with him maybe more than anything else because he, he's definitely he's definitely offers something that maybe a lot of players in Galway maybe don't have. It's that electric pace. Um, just on a, a couple of other fellas then, you're trying to think, uh, they've, they've drafted in one player who's kind of, He'd be in the garage, Hegarty kind of mould, um, big, strong, physical player. No, he probably, there's no point in comparing him to Garrod Hegarty. He's, he's, he's Jack Hastings, some lean mellows. I've heard he's just came back in phenomenal shape into the Galway setup. He, he went away, he's done his work. He probably, he would have been involved with Mellos' run in the last last few years under Louis McQueen in Galway. He, um, McQueen, I know, was a huge fan. He's, he's, he's good under the drop and ball. He's hard working. He's probably... A stereotypical modern wing forward, if you if you wanted to if you wanted to look at it like that, so he could be one that we could see a bit of maybe maybe against Westmeath the first day out just to see how he gets on at that level. Hmm, absolutely. So, are you feeling positive heading into this year? All Ireland back uh, back in uh, in Galway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> are, are Limerick going to the championship or something like that? Um, <laughs> yeah, that is the concern for everybody. Actually, do you know what? One yeah. thing I meant to mention, Conor Whelan, he's still only 24, isn't it? That's probably the craziest stat I've seen in a while. Yeah, it's, ah, it's frightening. And just, you think of the, the, the level he's gone to since he made his debut in 2015. Um, just physically, he's just phenomenal. And again, just on that same bin, it's, it's going to suit him down to the I ground. Like Cannon. it's and Concannon as well. So you've 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 plenty of you know, feed them ball, tell them to take on their main, you know, draw. You saw you saw how important an extra man could be last year for, you know, in Gal- when Galway played when played Tipperary, you know, Cahill Barrett sending off. I know you you controversially don't agree with that, but um, No, it's just controversially was sent off, not my opinion on it. That's not controversial at all. <laughs> he should not have been sent off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's that's fine. But um he so like you have that you, you see see the benefit of, of of the extra man in Hurling, which can be absolutely massive. Like you know, Galway probably mightn't have got over the line against Tipperary without 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 Barrett sending off, and even at that, they probably just kind of they fell over the line a small bit. They needed a goal from Aidan Hart, who, who wouldn't have been there in 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 the situation other than Barrett was sent off because they had a spare man back there. So and you won't be tackling Seamus Callan because you're so cynical. Oh yeah, that, and that's that's one hundred percent. I do the same, but just on the sin bin, like that's. But like there was no actual punishment, and even if the sin bin is in this year, that was so late on that tackle, Adrian Tui on Seamus Kellen, that it's it's no real punishment, really. Like you know, it's you know, you, you lose a man for what two or three minutes, and sure, if you're four or five pints up, you're going to take it, and even if they they're going to, you're, a couple of minutes are going to be wasted by the time the penalty is taken, and you know, it's it, like to me, it doesn't actually solve when the need is great. It's the rule, like it's. I, I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be particularly a fan of it. It's, fu- it's fine if it goes on in the twenty minutes, the first twi- you know first half, early in the second half. But when the need is greatest and Jamie Cannon is bearing down on Cole and say, "Oh, we have an advantage," like you're go- you're going to tell Adrian too, we still to pull him down. So it's it, it doesn't change anything from that from that perspective. Mm. And would you? I'd like to if I was a Galway fan, I'd like to see a lot of pace in that forward line. Maybe some of the young lads you're talking about, whether it was even Joseph Cooney going up in the forward line. Because I think, mm. like for to get the best out of Joe Canning, and you probably still need him to to really step up and have a big season if you're going to win that All Ireland. But probably need more pace around him. Like Davy Burke, maybe go back to midfield if he's going to stay in the team. Connor Cooney might be under pressure for his spot. But if you have a forward line that has Connor Wheel and Brian Concannon, Cahill Mannion has a serious bit of pace about him. Maybe Joseph Cooney. Then all of a sudden, I think opposition defenses are being pulled around the place, and Canning can do more damage. Yeah, and it, well, especially if you line up with. With, with six attackers, unlike the five last year, you know, you're, you're, you're automatically, like Galway's probably biggest strength is they have that, 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 that collection of four, we'll say, Canning, Kincannon, Whelan, and Cahill Mannion to, to choose some in attack. So, like, you, you have options in for the last two spots, and they're the positions that are going to be contested most. So, yeah, you, you're right when you say you put a bit of pace and maybe inject a bit of youth around them. But even if you had someone, a finisher like Evan Island around them as well, like, you know, if you had a, a ball winner like Joseph Cooney, just for, for someone to to feed Evan Island, because Evan Island, when he gets the ball in his hand, he will, he will finish the chances as well. So, um, th- there was that aspect to it. So, Pay, it'll be interesting to see with the new rules how much how much men like how many goal attempts are taken on this time round and pace could be could be key to that. All right. 
Yeah, absolutely. And just a reminder to anyone out there, if their club needs a fundraiser done this year, obviously nobody can get uh, crowds into a hall for the next while. But uh, we're doing online club fundraisers with our game, so that's a live virtual show that will be hosted on Zoom and we'll provide a ticketing platform for you. And if you want to sell raffle tickets as well, so email events at ourgame.ie. Thanks very much, um, David Connors of the Tomb Hurled, and hopefully Tip will be knocking out Galway at some stage this year. <laughs>